Kumasaka, a great thief, leader of a gang of bandits, distinguished by his bright eyes and, well, ominous stare. To start this project, I used some online tools to give me a good reference point for the base mesh and imported this into Blender. After about a few hours of pulling, prodding, tweaking, remeshing, and sculpting in Blender, I got to the point where I was fairly happy with the overall shape of the mask. I found myself using the sculpting tools more and more. I'm a novice when it comes to Blender, but they seem pretty intuitive and let me etch out all of the features, including these wrinkle lines. Brought the mask into Cura just for a size check and off to the printer it went. Having a dual extruder printer has been incredibly helpful for these projects. The prints turn out very well, and the supports are incredibly easy to remove. I think it's about time for a toast. Wonder where this came from. Like most of my recent copper metal prints, I'm going to use this zinc putty to infiltrate and reduce the shrinkage. Hello. to do some more experiments with this, but for now, we'll just rub this on the surface of the front and the back, just to see if this can infiltrate a little bit. The next step of the process is pretty easy to do. All we have to do is take this piece, put it into the refractory, slightly bury it, and pack it down, and we'll be putting this straight into the kiln with a little bit of carbon on top. A little shake helps the refractory settle. The carbon scavenges the oxygen so that the part doesn't oxidize. Here I'm just using a little bit of copper tape to cover the piece so that it reduces some of the consumption of the carbon. And in the kiln it goes for a debind and center, which essentially just means we burn off the PLA part and reduce that down to a solid metal piece. Here we are just excavating the mask, which is always uh, one of the most exciting parts of this process. A wire brush is pretty helpful during this part. Safety first. Depending on the refractory or firing schedule used here, you may end up with some scale on the part which I did. I'm just going to use my Dremel to scrape this off and make it a little easier to get this cleaned up. Paying extra attention to polish those banded eyes. It's looking pretty good, but I think we could do better with a bit of a peanut oil patina. This part requires some extra precautions because you certainly wouldn't want to do this in a closed space or next to anything flammable. The basic idea is that we heat this mask up to near red hot temperatures and take it to quench in the peanut oil, as seen but you may have to repeat this a few times depending on what you want the desired effect to be. Here we almost get a leathery red, but I think I'm going to give it a few more tries. About now is where that extra precaution comes in. Considering the peanut oil can ignite into a fireball. And although it is cool to look at, it's certainly very hot and burning. After the fire and quench, 
we need to still do a little bit of cleanup to get those edges to shine. And I think I also want to try to do a green patina as well. I don't know if this will work, but it's worth a shot. So here I'm going to just paint a little bit of vinegar on top and apply a layer of salt to try to react to that. The patina wasn't as prominent as I was hoping, but I think the end result still came out pretty well. There's some improvements that I'd like to make, but let me know what you think in the comment section. As always, cheers.